Hi guys. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure to, to have you here. But it's not a pleasure to. You be said here. that when? I said hi to the two. I said hi to the two. You said be yourself. <laughs> oh, okay. Shiro Gige and Mariga Thaidi. I don't feel there's a difference between boarding school and day school. A lot of the arguments that are being made about boarding school are that it spoiled kids in a way I don't understand. A lot of the vices you went through in high school, you just went through in day school in a different way. I think the problem we're addressing is the school system as opposed to whether it's day or boarding. My experience in high school, Agakana's not a school. <laughs> People just came to hang out <laughs> for like four years and then leave. It's true. <laughs> and you're going to do a with a test. <laughs> you just hang around. Kabrak was nice. I actually hear about people who went through bad high school experiences. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't St. Andrews, but it was decent. Had fun, made friends I'd lived with till now. Did a decent amount of chores. I wasn't saddened by it. I actually enjoyed my high school experience. We had swimming, we had everything we could think of for entertainment. So I wasn't bothered. But the rules, I didn't like waking up at 5, eventually woke up at 7 because we protested. But other than that, we had fun. So what, the guys who tried to burn the school once, I, they, they were, the, the, once. there was literally once, and they were caught, and that was the end. They didn't even get back into their school, like parents came and picked their boxes personally, as punishment. They're not allowed to get, they're not allowed to get into the school compound. Why did they try and burn it? They're always being suspended or expelled. They were either fighting or doing alcohol yeah. or doing something foolish. They, were, they got tired by their fourth suspension. They wanted, was wanted, they wanted, alcohol in their high school. Yeah. No, but it was, you know, it was decent fighting. So bullying got you expelled, but turning off the lights and beating people with broomsticks got you... No, the thing is that no one knew who was doing it. So you switch off the light in advance and then put on sweaters on your head. So they generally knew the general idea of who did it, but no one could prove it. The only way you could prove it was in the morning when guys had bruises. And then now, so the next three days after that, you find the other and group, the other group with bruises. bruises. They're kind of fun. They enjoyed it. I didn't oh. partake of this. I am a pacifist by uh -huh. nature. And they are where? Okay. <laughs> so now. <laughs> Some, sometimes. Yeah, yes. Small. Yes. Small. My high school. Which one? I hated it. Um, right off the bat, I was in St. George's Girls Secondary School. I called it St. Gereza for the two years I was there, and then I moved schools to Bryce Star. Hi, Mrs. Oshiro, you're a sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> that was my principal. She was, she was the best, like in the new school. Yeah. She was really, really, really nice, and she had an open door policy. So you could just walk in and tell her what's going on with you. Mm. So I really liked her, and, and I've actually gone back to. The other school is called Brister Girls High School. It's in Georgia. I've gone back there just to see people and say hi, like twice, just because I, I enjoyed the I enjoyed the experience. I've never gone back to St. George's. It will be a cold day in hell to find me back. <laughs> what was so bad about it? Everything. I think for me it was just culture shock. Yeah. What? Everything. Everything was horrid. First, you could smell the dining room from yeah, the dorms. Right. Yes, there's a St. G alumni up in here and she agrees. Hold on, that's a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Horrible. that's a horrible thing. That's a horrible thing. The dining room had a stench around it that you could not shake off. I don't, I've never smelled anything like it and I don't know how to describe what that smell was, but it was old dishwater meets sweaty rugby player meets the fuck is this? Why did I move? They said I had a phone in school to cheat on KCSE. Um, they're still finding that phone in the small school shamba they had. Um, have you found it, Mrs. Kituku? You know, it's, uh, I'm just asking. <laughs> so, did you find it? So, yeah. <laughs> so, and then they were like, oh, you know what, just, just, just accept to be expelled. And my parents were like, but then, relax. This is my father. He was like, relax. She's our child. She can come home. Yeah. So, that's how I left the school. And I've never gone back. Would you ever have started a fire though? No, I would not have started a fire. <laughs> 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 I would not have started a fire. Not because it 
it didn't occur to me actually to start it did not occur to me to start a fire mm -hmm. at some point it had occurred to me to run away then i thought about ninawa wajiro and i was like yeah. i'll be running to my mother. okay in retrospect <laughs> she'd have beaten me for what an hour maximum like it would have been what 45 strokes of the belt maybe and then you'll get over it and that's it yeah. in retrospect like it would still have been better than staying in senji but at that point i would not mm -hmm. have I, i i was thinking it's too much like i don't want that kind of punishment but in retrospect i probably should have run away why do i think people have been starting fires pressure internal pressure like I, i feel like we live in a very angry society generally like and our kids are angry mm -hmm. and they go to school angry and then they are subdued like first of all let me give a little bit of a history lesson that i picked up from a friend she's called dr ndia jaya actually she's a lecturer so the reasoning behind boarding schools was for british for the brits was that an african family does not support education which was a lie because i mean how are we getting ourselves educated in our own ways see kids were somehow learning how to be properly kikuyo properly luo or properly kalenjin there was education but for some reason only the brits can tell us about they thought african families cannot support education children the brightest minds of the african families were to be taken away and put in a system where their brains could be properly washed without having to deal with their own people every day and realizing what's happening to them psychologically <clears throat> that's the concept of boarding school it's to wash your it's to create employees who think a certain way mm. that you know it's to ensure that employees are at her majesty's service properly and so you find that today boarding schools are also you know pretty much the same thing we are trying to make sure that we em we create employees who are cutthroat who can do anything and everything to get ahead because you know those are people who can chase your profits higher and of course employers are never going to fight the concept of boarding school I, I, in all honesty i don't think they ever will because mm -hmm. that's where their tenders for rice and surprise are coming from i can call you a surprise <laughs> so <laughs> what work do you do do tell us a surprise it may now have spread to all schools i, I honestly believe our education system is a thorough mess like it's a it's very messy <laughs> first of all the the fact that we kenyans don't know about ourselves like i've been asking people describe kenyan culture no yeah, that's an answer we don't have a culture yeah we people, do, people people actually say we don't have a culture or we don't have this that and the other but people actually like we do not know anything about ourselves and the things we know are even our own history it's it's presented to us through the lens of operation legacy operation legacy was basically what the british government did in destroying documents from her former colonies and so they'd like throw them in the sea or in it like they were systematically doing it and so the documents that kenyan children are able to access in their textbooks and stuff through the history that they learn is just it's the sanitized version the, the, the operation like. legacy version mm. which is wrong it, it the system is there right mm. my thought is work with it make it work for us because sometimes we want to break systems but it's not possible in a day because now there's a issue of what function boarding schools fulfill currently right because they work for some people there are kids in high school who are on scholarships who had no other way of living and these are kids coming from mandera who didn't have three meals a day where they lived and so for very many parents this was a chance for them to it sounds really sad but offload them for 3 months and make sure that they have food, clothing and shelter for 3 months. And worked for very many people. You'd find that the people complaining about school food, but for a good portion of people that was actually good food and made you think about it is that this was probably better than what they ate at home. And so even the function of boarding schools, I agree might not have started as what we have loved it to, but it came to function in a very different way. Created for very many of these kids they saw they got exposure exposure that have probably never seen where they lived let's assume this kid um was in northeastern all his life right mm -hmm. he probably there's a mental state about being exactly where, where you are in a position yeah. of poverty he'd never have gotten out of many people i know whether rich or poor changed for the better in the encounter because they saw people who had lives they saw something different in their lives they were told they could do it there was there's a modest class distinction that happens every you can't avoid it in life they minimalized it in school so there are very many social benefits to boarding school there there, there are disadvantages I agree and it works that way but for very many kids who came from less privileged backgrounds 
there are very many things this school played, especially boarding school, that we can't see. You know what I disagree with in your argument, though? The fact that we have normalized oppression and poverty so much that anything sounds better. Like any, any kind of crumb that you're given sounds better. It's mm. at least you're having a meal. Mm. And for me, that's a dangerous place to look at life from because you never look at yourself as deserving of growth and as deserving of what you truly deserve. Like you look at the things that are supposed to be yours as privileges and that's a problem. The, the amount of, like, Capra had an interesting thing. Of The caning was banned on paper, but in practice it happened. Of course. <laughs> and so, there's a teacher called Chief, Mr. Kame. That man was a devil. Mr. Kame, that's what you were. <laughs> <laughs> he beat his own daughter till she fractured her hand. And she's Sorry? In, she's, he beat his daughter. She was in school. He used to beat people, kick them, hit them against poles, do frog jumps for an hour. When you even think about the nature of the punishments the kids got, in, a boys' schools were even worse. If you misbehaved really heavily, you'd go to the principal's office. Now, Mr. Henry Kipler got to take off his coat and then fold his sleeves and then now it's one on one. So he had, he, had, he had the sticks or if it was really bad, so it's one on one mortal combat. The fact that a child in Northeastern is so marginalized that boarding school is a saving grace is the problem to look mm. at. It is not to say that boarding school is a saving grace for a child from Northeastern and say boarding schools are necessary because they save children from Northeastern or places that are marginalized. It's to look at the marginalization and say, this is right the here problem. should not be happening. The fact that I, I feel bad every time, like on my Facebook wall, when I ask what are your experiences, or when I ask people about how they view the fires and on my wall and other walls, and people say, but as we went through, Kwani, what's wrong with these kids? Mm. We went through boarding school the first ourselves. Ones. Yeah, they're not the first ones. What's so special about these kids? Who do they think they are? Let me tell you what's so special about these kids. These kids have a thing you don't have. It's called dignity. They actually know what they deserve. That's the difference That's between you and kids. these kids. Yes, because they can look at the system they're in and realize I'm not supposed to live in prison. Mm. I am not supposed to live like this. That's why the kids are burning the schools. So your children walk into life, into a system that tells them kwetu kuna failure. Then they go into boarding school and even the little they had is taken away because boarding school is a real prison and the little they had is taken away and even their very voices are taken away. So if you take out outlets from these kids at all, so a lot of schools are saying no sports, CGO, academic performance, top notch, this, that and the other. No drama, no nini and even if when, it, when it's there, it's for a short period of time, it's not really given you know, like, it's not considered a way of life and not everybody gets to do it. We all knew there was a drama team, which was maybe 5% of the school. The rest of you, what were you doing? So you were either reading hard or reading hard and staying silent and being punished and that's it. That's how your kids are burning schools. They're not naughty, they have dignity. I'm pushing this back to parenthood, right? Because someone asked me how, even go back to homes, right? We run our homes as dictatorships. Yeah. But we somehow expect it to change when they get to school. <laughs> Bec so you don't listen to your kids. Mm. Yeah. You speak, they listen. You go to primary school, they get teachers who beat them if they misbehave mm -hmm. or, ask, they quest ask, or ask questions. Yeah. Then they go to high school where you listen or you're beaten. And like someone was asking some of these questions. And then you wonder questions. why they don't understand concepts yeah. like democracy means some people will lose, some people will win. Fine, high schools. Mm -hmm. You lock the doors, right? And the dormitories. You have, you have the doors locked from the outside and then you're locking these kids in in steel bars. Like, are you protecting children? Mm. What, what is the purpose of locking children in? You wake up at 4 a.m. When I was saying it was a prison, I thought about it. You wake up at 4, you eat, you go to class, you misbehave, you're beaten, you go for lunch, back to class, you're beaten, you're beaten some more halfway through. You go back to the dorms, you do all the manual labor you should do, then you're locked in the room, and then you wake up the next morning at 4. How the hell is that a system? But it, it still goes back to homes. Of these parents, we blame teachers, but I don't blame teachers as much because I feel teachers just represent who we are anyway. Yeah. Teachers are your mother and my mother. Yeah, they're right? a sample population. The way these teachers beat you in school and the way our, our parents beat us at home when you misbehave. And so we call teachers devils and what, but these devils live in your houses. Sorry. The article, the holy disc jockey. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was found worthy of his presence. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> 
But I think it was stupid of him to say those things. And if I was as it, I'd be somewhat embarrassed if my man are you listening? <laughs> my man went out there and said I put her through a test. Um, excuse you, you're not my headmaster. Mm. We are not yeah. like we don't have a power play in this conversation so that you are someone I have to match up to because that's what the concept of tests mean. Mm. It brings to mind it brings up to, it brings to mind the idea that I am of a higher standard than you and as such you're the one playing catch up. <laughs> And that's taking away from your humanity in grotesque ways. So no thank you. I think I think we all still test each other, just not consciously. Yes. That's why I was a bit I was I was curious about I was curious about <laughs> about DJ Moore's because he he said his out loud, right? That's that's I think the biggest furor with people. The thing is that people still do Q test. <laughs> you see, I, I like people who speak out like that because they let us talk about it. And the fact that suddenly people are starting to talk about it and people are saying they actually do test their significant others. So it does happen. Which I think Consciously or subconsciously. It's wrong, but it happens. But, it, the, yeah. but my question... Wrong? I think it's wrong I, because of the power play idea. So like the DJ Moore conversation about money, right? Mm -hmm. There's a running stereotype that women like money and women want money from men. Um, what we tend to do in that discussion is to trash it. And we say that men don't understand women and this and that, but no one really analyzes that. That stereotype, right? Why do men think women want money? Right? If I go to my own uncles, it's not a sentiment I've heard from young people. This is sentiments I've heard all across from men that all women want from is money. But you see, having a discussion with her, I realize that sometimes we confuse women needing monetary security for wanting your money. And so a lot of these stereotypes continue for a very long time. So the thing is, do, does every man want to know whether this woman would stay with him throughout money or not? Yes. The only difference is DJ Bo did something about it. Does every man have doubts that this woman, this woman might leave you for a man with no money? Yes. The only difference is this guy had the guts to he had the guts to come out and say what he did about it. Most other guys would ask questions, or would ask their friends to ask questions, or put them in situations like dates where they don't have money to see what she'd do. I think the problem is lack of communication as opposed to the tests. I think the tests are just a sign that we cannot communicate. Because these are, how many, you see men have pressure to provide. I'm a guy, I'm 26, I am in between jobs, I am doing so many other things, but the pressure you feel daily that everyone else is succeeding apart from you is big. Right? And you meet a girl and she looks nice and she looks like, yeah, mm -hmm. ah, she's pretty, she looks nice she deserves a good life and you're like shit i don't know if i can give it to her not now when you hear ladies talking about more successful men or even men looking up to more successful men and how they have money and all this these are real fears that come to men men have insecurities so this isn't only semi from dj mo's insecurity the extent to which he did the test was questionable but i think the bigger problem is why don't we communicate in a relationship if this is a fear that you feel that she won't stay with you when you stay in a poor place ask her look at her but DJ Mo probably could not. He comes from a society, and our society, where we do not ask questions, we doubt. And so you don't ask women questions, you just look. Men don't really ask women questions expecting the truth. Or they think they'll avoid them. Mm. And so probably his, his go-to was just to test her and to see it. And so I feel like this is a lack of communication and lack of addressing fears and concerns that especially men do have in relationships that they don't ever address. And so it comes out in ways which seem as brutal as this. If you're marrying someone who you think needs to go through a test to match up to you, you already have an attitude about that person and about what you can tell them and what you can't tell them. And that's a problem. And so I feel like, like he was saying communication, because Abby also asked us like, you know, what did we guys do? We didn't, didn't really have tests. How do we, we had conversations, like we had, Downright like many, hard, many uncomfortable, long, terrible, hard, true conversations. Very true, uncomfortable, hard, terrible, 
you know very honest conversations and we also had to have a place where we say you know what say whatever it is you're going to say and then the other one is not going to take offense because it needs to be on the table so we had to be very honest with ourselves about the way we both view money and that's where now we moved from going like oh women just want to use your money and men never want to give you money to realizing the concept of pressure for you know to provide on one hand and on the other hand the concept of being wired for financial security for a woman and so now we, we kind of sort of understand each other <laughs> you know where money is concerned but <laughs> somewhat almost maybe okay, kidogo Kidogo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kidogo sana. You owe me chocolates for saying that. Hey! <laughs> Every Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you owe me chocolates. Ah, yeah, I'm going to tender to you. I'm going to give you a conversation. Hey, that's your Mika. Because Jal, you're right about it. You were right, yeah. You were right, yeah. The way you're <laughs> The way you are at Greece. Sasa. Ndio 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 